Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to deep dive into the specific identification method of calculating inventory cost flows. All right, let's talk about this. Specific identification. First of all, the name kind of says it all. In a specific identification system, you are going to track every single item in your inventory separately. And therefore, you're going to track the value of each item separately. Now, one of the benefits of this is that by tracking every item individually, you're going to know exactly what you paid for an item. You're going to know exactly when that item sold. You're going to know exactly what is left over in your inventory. And therefore, both your cost of goods sold and your inventory are going to be extremely accurate. All right. However, in order to track every item individually, that means every item that you have has to have a unique identifier of some sort. Now, in the case of something like automobiles, this is easy to do because every automobile has what's known as a VIN, a vehicle identification number, and it is unique to that vehicle. So you can track every vehicle perfectly in and out. However, in the case of something like packs of bubble gum, you can see where this would get a little bit more challenging. Not every pack of bubblegum has a unique barcode on it. And even if you wanted to put a unique barcode on it, you have so many packs of bubblegum that the numerical computation and just the sheer space to record barcodes would get overwhelming. And so practical application is a little bit of a shortcoming to this. However, with that said, when you need to calculate cost of goods sold for your inventory, there are no assumptions needed under this method. You know what's sold, you know what it cost you. When you need to figure out the ending balance of your inventory to put on the balance sheet, there are no assumptions necessary. You know exactly what's left in your inventory and you know the exact value of it. This is a very accurate, though cumbersome, system. Here's an example. Firecore purchases inventory on June 1st, June 2nd, June 11th, and June 21st and I give you the respective prices of that inventory. Assume one unit each day. On June 25th, Flyercore sells the inventory purchased on the 2nd and the 11th. All right, so the middle two, it purchases those. What is the cost of goods sold for Flyercore and what ending inventory should it report on its June 30th balance sheet? Well, in a specific identification system, it really is as easy as saying, well, what did we sell? Well, we sold the June 2nd and the June 11th. That's the 1200 and the 900 So our cost of goods sold is simply the 1200 bucks because we sold that one, plus the 900 bucks because we sold that one, or $2,100. And the ending inventory balance is simply what's left. We still have the June 1st purchase for 800 and the June 21st purchase for 600 And so there's 800 left plus 600 left for 1400 left in our ending inventory. Specific identification is as accurate as you can possibly get. All right, that's it for this cost flow. Hope you found it helpful, and I hope you join me for another.